evening. This is Flo Grace Maloney. That's my Facebook profile picture. And I'd just like to introduce what I'm going to present to you. A few weeks ago, um, I came across um, a reading from uh, the book, Bible Readings for the Home, Comfort in Affliction. And it was on the, the topic which I just mentioned, and, it, and I saw this question, how does God regard the cry of the afflicted? And it said, he heareth the cry of the afflicted. And that's taken from Job thirty four twenty eight. At the time, I had intentions of sharing um, some of the books on the home health education around the great gift Christ made. And I couldn't go any further because I realized that God wanted to touch me on a personal level. So the other day, um, actually Friday just gone, I came across, um, I'd seen it before, but I came across again, Bible readings for the home leads to 12,000, let's get the figure, 12,500 baptisms and this is by a pastor called Pastor C.D. Brooks. So I was like, wow, it's the same book that helped me because it asks questions. And then you can find the answers directly from the Bible. Okay. Hi, this is still Flo here. Um, yeah, so just um, Friday, actually just gone, I was looking for a sermon transcript and this one happened to come up and it was by the same pastor, Pastor C.D. Brooks and I was so impressed by this and so I'm sharing it with you and it asks the question how to find the right church and then I explain why I am um, share this with you uh, so today is Wednesday, the 22nd of April, 2020. And this is this is a copy of the transcript. What I did, um, I took out some things and, and just generalized it as much as I could. Um, very little. But the actual, you can actually get this... Um, sermon, I will show you how to get this. There are so many churches that call themselves Christians, but there's one Christ. Are they all right? They are part right and part wrong. The devil is called the deceiver in the Bible. A deceiver is one who perpetuates deception. Deception is the co-mingling of good and evil. While Jesus would not use the truth, while Jesus would only use the truth, the devil uses truth and error. When he mixes it up, then he deceives people. Open lies do not deceive people. It's when you take a lie and dress it up in truth. And it's when you dress it up in truth that people are deceived. Jesus said in the Bible, and um, if you have a PDF uh, with uh, interactive, you can click that, you get the link. And I've done it here, so you can copy and paste. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. You will either love one or despise the other. Matthew 6, 19, 24. Jesus has a church. Matthew sixteen eighteen, Jesus says, says to Peter, Petra, masculine, singular. In the Greek, it means a pebble or a rolling stone. Christ then said, upon this rock, Petrus, a different form altogether. And that needs to be made clear that upon this solid rock, I will build my church, singular, possessive pronoun, Christ has a church. The church is not the building. A church is an assembly of individuals called out of darkness into light, 
called out of error into truth, called out of disobedience into obedience, called out of sin into salvation. In Ephesians 4, 5, the Bible says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. In Philippians 2, 2, it says, faith, oh, yeah, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. God is stressing oneness, one faith, one Lord, one God. Matthew seven twenty says, By their fruits you shall know them, not by their name or the size of the church, nor by the eloquence of the preacher or the power of the organ or the beauty of the stained glass windows, nor by the wealth they possess, nor the prestige they enjoy among the nations, but by their fruits. If I was to tell you my father was an audience, would you just turn to the first person and say, hello? No, you wouldn't. If I gave you some clues as to what color necktie he had on, the color of his hair, you'd be more likely to dive, identify him. Um, and I would add etc. there. Thank the Lord God has given identifying marks for his church. Did you know the devil is angry at God's true church? Revelation 12, 17 says, the devil, the dragon, who is who is the dragon, verse 9, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him, was wroth, angry with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, last of her seed. The That's the last part. The woman in prophecy represents the church. The church is the bride. Remnant means last, like the pieces left over from a bolt stroke roll of material. It will be the same color, texture, and design as the first piece that was taken off the roll. God's remnant church will believe the same things and teach the same things that Jesus taught when he was on this earth. Who is the remnant of the seed? They keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 19.10 tells us that is the spirit of prophecy. It refers to all the writings of the prophets. It is important that you find that church that doesn't sh throw away the parts of the Bible it doesn't agree with but believes. 2 Timothy 3.16 all scriptures go by inspiration of God, and they keep all Ten Commandments. James 2.10 says, if you keep the whole law and break one, you are guilty of all, that they do not place tradition above the word of God. Here are, here are, yes, here we are, here are some following tests they must pass, Isaiah 8.20, to law and to the to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there's no light in them. Truth must stand the test. You must read the word of God and test it for yourself. They will keep the commandments of God and not those of men. <clears throat> the remnant will not be the biggest, most popular place around, even though they teach truth, Matthew seven thirteen. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Why? 7 verse 14. Because straight is the gate and narrows the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. It's not that God is not willing to save a lot of folks, but because a lot of folks are not willing to be saved. They're not willing to give up the things they love. They love darkness rather than light. Too many love error over truth. There are few who are willing to follow God all the way. Praise God, there are a few. The crowd had never chosen to serve God, Deuteronomy 7.7. 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you, 
because you were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. The crowd had never chosen to serve God in the days of Noah. Eight people were saved. All Jesus wants to do is save us, give, give joy and happiness. If you go to the center of town and said, you're going to get drunk, people will probably ask to join you. But say you are going to join Christ, they would say, you shouldn't do that. The Bible in Proverbs 49 says, fools make a mock at sin. Another identifier, they be a worldwide movement. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. They will teach health principles. There are reasons not to drink alcohol, reasons why worship is on the Sabbath. There's reasons why they worship on the Sabbath, that should be. There are some things Christians shouldn't defile their bodies with, First Corinthians 3, 16, 17, states that, we are the temple of God, for the temple of God is holy. The Bible says in First Corinthians 10, 31, Whether ye eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Who can drink alcohol to the glory of God? Now, friends, don't despair. There is victory through Jesus Christ. They are a peculiar people. In this world, you just have to go you just have to do right and you stand out. They are peculiar for doing right. We are not perfect, but through Jesus, he makes us right. God has sheep, that should be God. God has sheep who are not of this fold, John ten sixteen, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold, fold. them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Jesus is making a call. Revelation 18.2 And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean hateful bird. Verse 4 says, My people, to come out. Of where? Babylon. And what is Babylon? The church that left the truth. Second Corinthians six fourteen seventeen. Be ye not unequally unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? Verse seventeen, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. God's people are a gathering of people called his fold. How do you know his people? They, they do not keep the traditions of men. Jesus said, Matthew 5, 9, But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Consider Revelation fourteen twelve. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Look at what Jesus said, John 15:10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. The Bible says in Luke 4:16, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. If Jesus were here today, he would join those going to church on the Sabbath, Saturday. Jesus would join with the remnant of God's people who keep all ten commandments, James 2.10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Jesus is the same yesterday and forever. End of transcript. Flo Maloney Prendergast. And once again, the title is, and I put it up here, How to Find the Right Church. What church would Jesus join? So I will conclude that 
What Church Would Jesus Join If He Were Here? This is Flo Grace Maloney Lee Prendergast, and today is Wednesday, the 22nd of April, 2020. May you be blessed. God be merry.